Welcome back to Q's workshop. Uh, today I'll continue on the ER32 lathe collar chuck, uh, so part two. But let's quickly recap part one. So in part one, I cleaned up uh, the face of the workpiece just to create a good meeting surface um, to connect with the lathe faceplate. Uh, I created a recess, which then meets the register on uh, the lathe faceplate and then also just drilled and tapped the holes. All right, so now back to part two. Uh, what I'm gonna do here is uh, clean up uh, the outer diameter uh, of the workpiece, uh, make it nice and smooth, and then drop a, a dial indicator onto it that we can test the actual runout. All right, so let's hop into it. Uh, here's a little montage of uh, cleaning up uh, the surface. All right, so now that the surface is cleaned, uh, I've got a dial indicator on uh, zeroing it out. Uh, and this is then just to check, does the workpiece as it sits now remain concentric and true to how I cut it? Um, it, it should be because it was just cut. Uh, just in the movement you see there on the gauge is, is more because of the surface finish uh, than anything else. Uh, but what we'll do now is remove the workpiece, turn it, uh, and uh, uh, drop the dial indicator on it again. I'm just marking uh, the workpiece here that you can actually see uh, when I turn it. And the, I've also got a reference point on, on where I'm moving it to. All right, so I've got the dial indicator back on. Uh, there you can actually see the blue dots uh, just marking that you can see that it's turned. Uh, it's literally just turned to the next screw hole. Uh, but as you can see on, on the actual indicator, if I, once I get it zeroed in, There you can actually see there is some some movement on it. Not that much. Um, looking at the indicator, it, it probably moves about 0 0.02. Um, so I wouldn't say it's a, a lot, but I'm also not naive to think that I'm going to get it perfect. Uh, so I'm going to move the 
style indicator now to the face edge uh, of the workpiece and give it a test there because that would indicate that is it is the workpiece actually tilting um, when I've turned it is it now tilting uh, slightly which will then um, make it make it wobble all right so I've moved it zeroed it out and there you can see there's there's quite a bit of movement on it uh, probably between 0 0.05 and 0 0.06 millimeters of movement uh, that I'm not happy about um, that means that it that it wasn't um, the recess and that register is not perfect all right so I've turned uh, the collar chuck back to its original location uh, when I did the cleanup on on the outer diameter so I just got to get that uh, zeroed out and then we can check if uh, if if we back to the original runout uh, which was basically zero and there you can see it's definitely not um, there's still if I look there it's going to about plus five and then it's moving back down to at least 10 or 11 uh, so we got 0 0.15 minimum 0 0.15 uh, millimeter run out uh, on that which is definitely not good all right so let's take a look at why that is um, so i've loosened the collar chuck um, the, the screws are, are loosened um, and then I'm lifting the chuck up to see if there's any play between the recess and the register uh, so there you can see it is loose and there I'm lifting it up and if you look at the two blue dots you can actually slightly see that the collar chuck is actually moving in a vertical um, direction all right, so the only thing to do now really is to get it back into the forge jaw, uh, which I've got it mounted there now. Um, got the dial indicator on it just to try and center it as best possible. Then um, at least I don't have to take too much off uh, the outer, the outer diameter again once uh, once the recess is recut. So coming up, a high speed montage of me cutting uh, the face and uh, the recess again. Enjoy.
All right, so I managed to get that cleaned up nicely. Um, I didn't take it all the way to the edge there, as you can see, onto the outer diameter, because that's all going to get cleaned up anyway. Uh, I left the center in again for in case I need to redrill uh, the mounting holes, and at least I've got a center point to work with that's on the same level uh, as uh, the, where the holes are going to get drilled. Uh, so I'm just deburring, deburring the holes, and uh, then check if 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 they actually still mount up, or if I have to redrill. I've also left the forge or chuck mounted onto the workpiece just in case I need to redo it all again. Uh, so I'm checking now if the recess and the register fits uh, uh, snugly on one another. And that definitely feels a lot better. There's no movement on the piece whatsoever. It actually takes a bit of pressure to get it onto the register. So it's a, it's a, a, a nice snug fit on there. And another bonus, the holes line up nicely um, to the, the lathe surface plate. So I can just fasten that up again and uh, then redo the outer diameter and then put the dial indicator back onto it. Right, so cleaned it up nicely, got a good surface finish on that to do the testing with. Uh, so I'm going to bring the dial indicator over and um, do a first check on it. Right, I've got the dial indicator zeroed out and I mean, as you would expect, there's not much movement on it uh, other than um, that that's coming from the surface finish. So what I'll do now is uh, I'll just mark the piece and uh, turn it again uh, like I did earlier and then uh, give it another test in a different position. All right, so I've turned it one. Uh, so I've made dots again to where it was, um, moving the dot just to the next bolt and then starting to fasten it up. Here you can actually see that it actually has to get pushed onto the register on the, the back plate. It, it doesn't just um, fall onto it. Um, yeah, it actually has to get squeezed over, which is which is good because that means that there's a nice tight fit between the register and the recess on uh, the collar chuck. Right, so I'm just going to fasten that up and then uh, drop the dial indicator onto it again. All right, uh, got the dial indicator on, and there's not much uh, much movement um, between 0 0.01 and 0 0.02. It does seem to stay pretty constant until a certain point, uh, which I'm which I'm showing there now. Uh, I also noticed a a bit of a different shine on the steel there. It's it's almost like um, it could still be some of the scale uh, because it's a lot brighter in that spot. So it could be that there's still a bubble uh, under the surface there. So it's a lot softer, so it's not cutting into it properly. Uh, therefore, it's a little bit risen up um, in, in that spot there that I'm showing. 
so that's where it, it rises and then it just drops down again and it, it stays constant. But a lot of that is going to get cleaned up now when I move over to taking the diameter down to uh, the 125 that I'm looking for. All right, so I've moved the collar chuck back to its original position. Um, so you can see the two blue dots are back together there uh, just to see if we get that concentricity back to, let's say, the zero uh, where, where we would expect it to be because it was cut in that position. Uh, and it does look like it. I mean, if you look at the gauge there, it stays pretty constant on just under the zero until again when it gets to that high spot uh, on uh, where the, the surface is, is raised a bit. Um, I suspect that um, uh, that scale may may still be causing that, but it, it looks pretty good. Uh, so all I'm going to move over to now is just cleaning up the outside down to uh, down to the uh, the diameter that I'm looking for. Right, so I'm going to start taking off uh, the bulk of the outer diameter now. Uh, about 10 millimeters still needs to be removed there. And uh, it's a prime opportunity to do uh, some testing on, uh, on the tool bits. Uh, so to check things like surface finish uh, versus the, the speeds and feeds, that kind of stuff. So I'm starting here with a brazed carbide tool. Uh, I find it to be the most versatile when it comes to interrupted cuts, uh, like the scale on the outside because it's uneven and also very hard. Uh, it would tend to chip insert carbide type tools uh, where the brazed one uh, it tends to last a lot longer. Uh, so I'm going to run through a couple of tools here. I'll drop a picture in the corner for each as I go through them and uh, we see the type of finish that we get. I'll also drop into the description where I purchase my tooling. Uh, no affiliation, not sponsored. I just get good service every time I purchase there. Uh, so I definitely want to give a shout out to them.
Right, so that's the outer diameter finished. I didn't take it all the way down to 125 millimeter, uh, mainly because my back plate of my lathe is 125 and I didn't want to cut into it when I pass over, uh, so I stopped just shy of that. Uh, but as I was cutting there, you could actually clearly see the change in surface finish. So as as the the next tool comes in, you can actually see the color of the surface change, and that's the, the surface finish. Um, for me, I think the brazed carbide gave me the best finish, um, definitely on that. So I'm going to use the brazed carbide to clean up the the actual face of uh, of the the workpiece now as well. But first up, let's just put a chamfer on that back corner just to make it nice and soft when uh, when it gets taken off. I just took that nice and slow because I didn't want to scratch my back plate. And so now let's hop over to cleaning up uh, the face. Right, well that's it for part two of this video series. Um, it took a bit of a different direction than I wanted to. Uh, at least got to clean up that recess, uh, redo the recess and uh, to have a much better fit against the register. I'm very happy with, uh, with how that turned out this time. Uh, next up we'll be cleaning up the bulk of the material um, to take us down to the size for the nut that fits on there so I'd like to thank you for watching uh, if you like the video please subscribe like you're welcome to drop in some comments and uh, see you next time